Welcome back, Irish fans. Breaking on Braves Boys podcast. Kind of my first true off-season video of the year. National Championship ended a few days ago. And uh, it's kind of time for the transfer portal. It's transfer portal and recruiting season. Seeing all types of commitments and guys hopping in the portal pretty much from every conference, from every team. And that's kind of the landscape of college basketball now. Notre Dame is in that, though. Um, they've had two guys announced they probably won't be returning to school with Blake Wesley and Paul Atkinson. That certainly affects their transfer portal outlook. And uh, still waiting on some other decisions, but those decisions are somewhat obvious based on who they've reached out to in the portal. And I'll get into that throughout this video. Um, first, kind of kind of list who they've publicly reached out to. I've also heard some names, but haven't really confirmed them. Uh, I'll kind of bring up like where those guys would be playing at if they do end up at Notre Dame. Uh, but the public guys they reached out to uh, start with Dylan Penn, the Bellarmine point guard, Keyshawn Bartholomew, Colorado point guard, Andre Curbelo, the Illinois point guard, Mark Sears, the Ohio point guard, Dante Allen, a wing from Kentucky, Grant Basile, right state forward slash center, Wilden Slavek, South Carolina center, Manny Bates, the NC State center, obviously Notre Dame's really familiar with him, and Warren Washington, the Nevada center, who is a seven-footer and the only seven-footer Notre Dame's reached out to so far. So the other guys I've heard um, has kind of just been more of the same in terms of primary ball handlers slash point guards and big men, like kind of big men who are structured like a Manny Bates physically – or a Wilden Slavek, guys who will do the dirty work, block shots, play perimeter or play low post defense. And it's kind of what Notre Dame needs. And uh gonna start with point guards, because that's a really obvious trend. That likely means no Blake Wesley, no Prentice Hub next year. I think that was fairly obvious based on what well, Blake obviously said he has no plans of returning. Prentice Hub, though, has not decided. I think we can all kind of see that. The writing is on the wall and Prentice Hub's career in Notre Dame probably will not continue just based on who they've reached out to. Uh, those guys were both really important last year. I don't think this team works without the playmaking that those guys provided for all the flack that Prentice Hub got, the way he didn't turn it over last year, the way he took care of the ball, and the way he kind of started the chain of events offensively to get guys good looks. Maybe he didn't get the assist numbers that he got in 2019-2020 or 2019-20 or 2020-2021 but he was a huge like he was a huge part of that offense getting flowing and I think the grass may not always be greener on the other side with a guy like Prentice Hub although he did get a ton of criticism while at Notre Dame and he certainly had holes in his game but I think if Notre Dame doesn't get a point guard we're really going to miss what Prentice Hub provided to this team in terms of just being like the composer, being the guy who kind of started the flow of the offense every time. And that was huge for Notre Dame. And this team doesn't work without a guy like Prentice Hub kind of orchestrating it. Uh, they're going to need to get that in the portal. It seems like they have made that an emphasis. There's four straight up point guards they've reached out to publicly. And then a few others who uh, I think will probably end up being public at some point. Uh, especially if they get one of them. But those are the main guys, and uh, you can certainly see a trend with those guys who they've reached out to. If Notre Dame doesn't bring in a point guard from the portal, they'll likely have a backcourt of J.J. Starling. I'm guessing Cormac Ryan will come back. Trey Wirtz, uh, I think, is probably coming back. But I think that also depends on what they do in the portal. Dane Goodwin will probably return, and then you also have the two walk-ons. So you have a couple guys in J.J. Starling, Cormac Ryan, Trey Wirtz. Uh, and even Elijah Morgan, who have played point guard in their career, but the three scholarship guys there um, are probably better suited off the ball, at least Starling and Ryan are. And I don't think you really want to rely on Trey Wirtz to be your primary ball handler and a work of Schrader. He hasn't really shown that he's the guy who can turn the corner and kind of get the defense out of position so you can get a good shot. I don't think Trey Wirtz is really that guy. I'm not sure he has the burst to do that. And, that's what I like in terms of the point guards they've looked at. You got Andre Curbelo, who certainly has first. Mark Sears, I'm not sure is a realistic option for Notre Dame, but he's a guy who can really turn the corner. Bartholomew's got some bursts. Dylan Penn also does as well. And Dylan Penn is just a really fundamentally sound, good basketball player. So 
I like what Notre Dame's targeted in terms of a point guard. They've also had some things going for them in 2023 where they've really looked after point guards. And I'm going to do a, I think an article is being posted in a few days about that specifically, but uh, Notre Dame has really made it an emphasis point to get a point guard post Prentice hub. And I think that's really important. I think the staff realizes how important point guard play is in this landscape of college basketball. Hub was an example of that. And uh, Purdue was an example of what happens if you don't have that. You had guys like Jaden Ivey, who's going to be a top five pick. Zach Eady is one of the best bigs in college basketball. Travion Williams, a bunch of good role players, but they didn't have a point guard and probably underachieved because of that. They lost to St. Peter's, who <laughs> I guess not much shame in losing to them, but this Purdue team had the talent to be a Final Four team and, frankly, had the talent to win it all, and they didn't because they don't have a good point guard. They didn't bind defensively, and part of that's also because they didn't have a point guard because they didn't have a real leader on that end of the floor. And uh, I think Notre Dame staff was probably paying attention to that and realized how important a point guard is. I wasn't really sure that they were going to target one, but I'm really glad that they have reached out to some point guards in the portal and have made it a priority to kind of get an orchestrator to set up guys like J.J. Starling and Cormac and Trey better than if all of them are kind of manning point next year. And certainly uh, an encouraging sign that the staff is open to adding a guy like that. And uh, they obviously won't do it if it's not a great fit or the guy's not Notre Dame caliber player. But it's good to see that they're open to doing that and they want to add a guy like that before the season. Moving on, Dante Allen is kind of the outlier in terms of the guys they've had public interest in. Uh, I don't really think them reaching out to him means anything for the possibility of guys returning like the point guards would be for Prentice Hub. I don't think Dante Allen being reached out to is an indictment on Dane Goodwood's chances at returning. I think it's kind of one of those things that he's so talented that you just find a spot for him if he wants to play at Notre Dame and if he has the grades and all those type of intangibles to come to Notre Dame. Uh, I think the upside is way too good to pass up on. Kind of reminds me of Johnny Juzang when he hopped in the portal. I don't think he's a Johnny Juzang caliber player, um, but he's a guy who was in a catch and shoot role at Kentucky under some other like really good players who he probably wasn't better than, but I do think he has some off the dribble ability that he hasn't really shown yet. And I think he could do that in a school like Notre Dame where he's got more of a role offensively and, he also has some upside defensively. He's athletic. He's long. Uh, he can move around well. And I think he'd be a really nice addition to Notre Dame. I'm not sure what his role would be, though, because assuming that Cormac, Dane, and Trey come back, they have what? That's Starling, Trey, Cormac, Dane, Nate, and then one of these big men, I'm assuming, gets added to the roster. And then you have a guy like JR who you'd be recruiting over with Dante Allen. I don't think he'd start at Notre Dame next year. And I don't really know that Notre Dame wants to recruit over a guy like J.R. Knezny. So it'd be really interesting to see how they'd kind of make it work with Dante Allen. But to me, he's kind of just a guy that they reach out to because he's so talented. It's not an indictment on Dane Goodman's chances of coming back. I think we'd see them reach out to a lot more guys who would play the three or play a small ball four if Dane wasn't coming back. But, uh, Really interesting that they reached out to him. He's got a couple of years of eligibility as well. So would be a guy that would maybe wait his turn. But coming from Kentucky and uh, with all the talent he has, I don't think he'd be a guy that would really want to wait his turn. But lastly, my number one priority heading into the offseason uh, in the portal was a big who could do the dirty work, i.e. block shots, rebound, defend the post. And two of those things Notre Dame really struggled with this year. Uh, they were last in the ACC in block shots, had 1.88 block shots per game. The second lowest, I forget which team, was like over 2.25 block shots per game. So they were by far the worst shot blocking team in the ACC, and they really missed Juwan Durham in that aspect. But they also struggled to defend good physical bigs, and part of that has to do with shot blocking. Part of it has to do with not having the physicality down there or the athleticism to really – make up for those guys being so talented and Notre Dame seemed to kind of realize that and target that in the portal. They targeted Manny Bates, Wildens Levesque. Um, what's the guy? The Nevada transfer. I forget his first name. 
Warren Washington. I had Wildens Washington for some reason, like the South Carolina guy. Uh, he's a seven footer guy who can really block shots and all three of those guys can get up and block shots. Uh, they probably also reached out to a few other guys in that aspect. I don't recall hearing about any, but I'm sure they have. And uh, they've seemed to really target that in the portal. A guy like that wouldn't be your primary offensive producer because you have guys like J.J. Starling, most likely Cormac and Dane coming back as well. But you're probably going to need your big guy to be close to Paul Atkinson or maybe not that close, but a guy who can be serviceable out of the post that can get you a bucket when you need it. Atkinson was really good for that. He's probably – that's probably his main contribution was being the safety blanket for Notre Dame. I don't think that they're going to need a Paul Atkinson type offensive player next year, but I think it's really important that they get someone who can do the dirty work, but can also kind of chip in offensively when they need him to. The main scoring is not going to come from the big men this year, especially if uh, Nate Leschewski doesn't come back. I don't think they're going to really – need that much from their bigs offensively. It's mostly going to be a guard-driven offense, kind of like it was this year, but uh, maybe to a bigger extent. I think they're going to need a guy who's serviceable down there, but more importantly can do the dirty work, and those three guys fit that mold. Mandy Bates is, I think, better than I Atkinson in almost every aspect, but those three guys fit the mold of kind of what they're looking for, if they're looking for what I'm looking for in terms of a guy who's – Big can defend the post, can rebound, and can block shots. And getting any of those guys would be huge, even if they're not the total player that Grant Basile is, uh, who is a really solid player that they've reached out to, and a guy that it's kind of been reported he's a finalist, or they're a finalist for, and I think they have a really good chance with. Um, I think they'd have the same issues with him at the five that they did Atkinson. To me, Basile is a better Leshevsky replacement than Atkinson. I think he's a really good player. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at all if they took him, but I do think you still have issues if you take a guy like Grant Basile and no other big. And uh, even then, you'd be recruiting over a guy like Matt Zona. Then if you get another big, Matt Zona's buried on that depth chart, and some of the freshmen and Elijah Taylor would also not be in a great spot to get playing time. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they handle this. Do you get Basile and take the offensive skill set and kind of take your lumps like you did this year defensively? Or do you try to go big and get a guy like Levesque or Washington or maybe even Manny Bates, who seems like a bit of a long shot? But those are the types of guys that I think I'd rather have than Basile. But there's certainly upside of taking a guy like Basile. I'll get more into him if he actually commits to Notre Dame. I don't want to make this a whole analysis video on one player. But uh, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of what they do in terms of bigs. They seem to be prioritizing Greg Basile from Wright State. But they also have reached out to a lot of guys who aren't quite him in terms of the mold of a player. They've reached out to a couple dirty work guys and just Basile in terms of that. So I wonder if they take two bigs. I feel like that'd be a little far-fetched, but it might be necessary. And I think they might be better off doing that. Then you bury guys on the depth chart. And uh, doesn't really seem to express confidence in the bigs currently on the roster that uh, they're reaching out to guys like this. I remember when John Mooney was going into his junior year, he was the guy they weren't recruiting over him. They trusted that he would develop. But uh, with Matt Zona and Elijah Taylor going into their junior year, Notre Dame's recruiting bigs over them. And uh, that's certainly not something that I like to see uh, in terms of their development and something that inspires confidence in me that they can contribute. But uh, also not too worried about the freshmen, uh, Campbell and Ben Lubin. Uh, I liked what I saw from Campbell. I think he's going to take some time, though, to really be a big-time contributor. Certainly wouldn't be the starting five this year, even if uh, they don't get a transfer big. I think it'd be Zona, um, assuming they get no one. Then Lubin, I think, wouldn't really be in that log jam. I think the log jam would be at the five of Zona and uh, the transfer. There's also a bit of a log jam at the four. But Ben Lubin, I think – if he's good enough, he's going to find playing time regardless of who they take. JR, I'm also not really concerned about because um, JR can play the three and I think maybe even be better suited there. I'm more concerned about the 2020 guys. Sanders got passed by JR. He's going to have a hard time finding the court this year. Zona and Taylor, more so Zona, are getting recruited over. I think those two can still get minutes, but it's going to be tough if they get a transfer big and 
I'm not sure I like uh, that they're recruiting over him in terms of what we can get from them. I don't really blame them for recruiting over them. I'm not sure they've really seen enough from either of them to trust that they can be the the guy to start the year. But uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how their front court shapes out in terms of who they're recruiting in the portal, what kind of big they get in the portal, how it affects Matt Zona, Elijah Taylor, and uh, a lot of pieces have to fall in that front court as well, especially if Nate Lachesky doesn't come back or even if he does things are still complicated so really going to be interesting to see what happens in terms of their front court and the guard spot uh, that they're recruiting in the portal I don't think they're super targeting a wing I think it'd have to be a guy that they really like and uh, are really invested in taking but there's a lot of things that have to fall Uh, kind of wanted to come on here and give an outline of what they seem to be wanting to do in the portal this year though and uh I'm sure I'll be back with more portal videos, whether that's analysis of players they're going after or hopefully commit pretty soon. But uh, thank you guys for watching. We're going to try to get some content out in the future here. Um, in the off season, I'm sure commitments will make that easier, especially because they got some roster spots to fill. But be a lot of recruiting talk, uh, a lot of postseason analysis, and a lot of – other things. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what yet, but we got some months to fill. Hopefully some interviews in there, bring back to my roots, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, Let me know what you think about Notre Dame's chances in the portal, who they're recruiting. Uh, Let me know what you, who you think they should get, who you think uh, would be the best fit for Notre Dame, but I appreciate you guys watching again and uh, hope everyone has a great night and peace.